Roblox Arsenal went from an absolute powerhouse of the Roblox gaming catalog, ruling every single commentary YouTuber's background footage and starting plenty of YouTubers' careers, to being a slowly falling relic of the past. Today, I'm going to be going over the rise and fall, and how this could have been prevented or if it was just fate. The famed Roblox game studio named Rolve, known for making Valve titles on the Roblox platform such as Counterblocks and Typical Colors 2, released a new game called Arsenal. It was based off the Counter-Strike game mode Arms Race, or you know, Call of Duty's gun game, I guess, I don't know. It was mostly the Counter-Strike version though. The game was relatively successful for what it was, I mean, Rolve didn't expect much from it. It was a very basic version of what we know today. But after around 3-4 to four years of slowly making random updates, Rolve decided to fully revamp the game using their previous used engine in Typical Colors 2. This allowed Arsenal to be smoother, cartoon and also incorporate special features such as projectile weapons, player skins, rocket jumping, and more. After porting Arsenal to the TC2 engine, they released the revamp of Arsenal in November of 2018, which after this revamp, the game instantly saw an increase in player counts. I mean, by December, they were already averaging around two to 5,000 players, I think. But over the next coming months, a community would start building around the game, and in February, YouTubers would start making content on the game, such as John Roblox, myself, and Bandai. At this point, this, the game would slowly climb in player counts as they released more and more updates for the game that included free skins, maps, guns, and also events. I mean, the first event was the Work It At Pizza Place collaboration, which you would have to go into Work It At Pizza Place and deliver 100 pizza to get this certain badge, and, and that would let you claim a rare skin in Arsenal. Rare skin. It's not really rare anymore, but at the time, it was. This would be one of many collaborative events that Arsenal would hold with other popular games, such as the other one they did with Adami, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you know, Arsenal was just getting started. As 2020 came around the corner, Arsenal was approaching its peak. I mean, with everyone indoors due to the you know. <laughs> Arsenal actually proceeded to expand in its player count, especially with updates such as the second summer update, which peaked at around 65,000 players, which is huge. Things would continue to look absolutely phenomenal up until their first major Halloween update. <laughs> This was promised to be a live event and was hyped for weeks. I mean, we had people like Creekcraft getting in on it. By the way, he played a lot of Piggy at the time. That's how hyped up this was. But overall, this update came as a slight disappointment to many of the non-Arsenal players, as the live event was kind of just a flash on the screen. So with this update, it came a large drop in initial player counts, which reached its lowest point in the past six months. But it would have a slow rise back up to the top, as well as the huge FNAF event in January of 2021, which would also have Arsenal reach its new highest point. But after this FNAF update, I would say this is what started the decline. As Rolf would announce they weren't planning on updating the game for another four to five months in February. This was the first time Rolf was openly not planning on making any updates for the game, which scared a lot of the fan base, including myself. Uh, as a YouTuber for the game, I was a bit spooked, as Arsenal isn't really filled with content for consistent players. I mean, the game itself is very linear and lacks replayability without any app, but it wasn't all gloom and doom for Arsenal, as one of the Rolf members actually announced a lot of very promising upcoming events to Arsenal that would help increase its replayability, such as custom maps and custom game mode, which would honestly be huge. I mean, with these announcements, players were still angered by the lack of updates, but also eagerly waiting on the edge of their seats for this next major update coming to Arsenal. But Arsenal would then go relatively quiet until July, in which they finally released the third summer update. Instantly, players realized a lot of the promised updates weren't even there. And by this time, a lot of the biggest Arsenal YouTubers on the planet have already quit the game, such as Tanker and John Roblox, with Tanker moving to Bedwars at this point and John teetering between Arsenal and TDA. The summer update was met with a lot of criticism. I mean, people were extremely extremely mad that they waited over six months for nothing that was promised. After that, Rolf then stopped updating the game until the Halloween update later that year, which really only revamped many old maps and added plenty of new skin, but also it did nothing for the replayability of the game, as well as it didn't add any of the promised updates from the summer update. The same update failed to reignite the flame Arsenal once had, as this update only peaked around 40,000 players, which is a lot, but it was still lower than the average player count for the game in 2020. This was the last update that significantly spiked Arsenal's player count, and since then, then Arsenal has been on a slow decline in players, as even with their most recent update releasing, it seemed to have only peaked around 30,000 players, and as of writing the script, it has already went down to 15,000 concurrent players. With a mix of lack of updates and people adjusting back into the real world after the, you know, pandemic, and poor update timing, Arsenal has been met with an unfortunate decline in player counts. And even though Arsenal isn't doing as hot as it was in its years prior, many people, including myself, still love this game to our core, and it is still a staple in any Roblox player's career. And is still held up to high standards today. 